Hey, welcome back to another restoration video. It's a Peugeot Izoa 9091. Um, some tips and stuff along the way. Uh, hopefully it helps you out. Uh, it seems like my videos are getting longer and longer, but um, I'll put the timestamps in the, the description below. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. Uh, here's the bike I picked up off Facebook Marketplace. In pretty good condition, so I jumped on it straight away. It was a good price. It was listed as a 26-inch fixed hub, so that was a little mysterious. But yeah, it ended up being a normal geared bike. All right, here's the bike, got it back home. Um, yeah, I think it was in pretty good condition. Frame was pretty banged up, uh, a lot of scratches. Um, the hoods were real dirty, um, but it had an RX100 group set in white, and then also matching uh, matching wheels with uh, Shimano 105 hubs to array of rims. Uh, pretty good pickup, I think. Um, everything was kind of matching, everything was there. Yeah, the cassette wasn't too too bad either. So yeah, I think it's pretty well looked after at one point. Um, probably been sitting out for a while. Um, yeah, just some rust in the bolts here and there. Um, the turbo saddle, of course, that was good. You see the rust on the rails there. Clean that up. Um, some stickers here and there. You can see the, and the scratches on the frame. I'll try to clean those up as well. But yeah, we're all really happy with uh, with this pickup. All right, breaking down the bike. I'm um, just taking everything off here. Everything came off pretty pretty easily, uh, except for the cranks. They were really hard to get off. So I just uh, just sprayed them a little bit with WD-40, let it soak for a little bit, and just making sure I took my time with it. I made sure the crank remover tool was on straight and on properly. Um, and yeah, finally they came off with a bit of effort. Um, yeah, here's the frame, all broken down. If you're ever wondering what this little hook thing is, it's to put your chain on if you're switching out a wheel or need to do something. Um, but yeah, everything came off relatively easy. All right, clean the frame. So it has a lot of stickers and stuff on it. What I did was use this old cherry bocca, boccacini lid. It has soft plastic so you can kind of scrape scrape things off with it without damaging the frame. But yeah, a little tip there. Yeah, it worked quite well for me. Spray WD-40 on the stickers first and then it will help it come off. Um, and then yeah, I just use a little bit of degreaser, clean up the frame. All right, next step was removing these uh, stickers. A little bit of pain here. I don't know, they were, I guess they were on there for a really long time, so they were really, really stuck on there. I used uh, just warm water or hot water and got it off that way. Um, hot water, some WD-40, it came off. Uh, probably looks easier in video, but yeah, it took a little bit of time as well to take those off. Uh, yeah, there was this uh, Oakley sticker on the, on the frame. It was super, super, super hard to get off. I don't know what it was about it. It was it was insanely hard. Um, I had to use kind of a razor blade and then use a hairdryer to heat it up. And even then, it was still really hard. Um, if you're going to try this, just be careful with your razor blade, making sure you know you're not going to scratch your frame too bad. Um, but it finally finally came off, and yeah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, next thing I did was take out the frame. Uh, got this tip from. Uh, Bike at UK, shout out Bike at UK. Um, I'll put his channel down below. Um, he was actually one of the, the first guys that inspired me to do these videos, so uh, take a look. Um, but yeah, T card basically what it does is it stops um, oxidization and gets rid of any scratches and stuff like that. But yeah, just be careful when you use it because I think what it does is it takes a thin layer off your frame. So if you uh, go too hard or use it too much it's gonna it's gonna wear through the clear coat and the paint maybe um, and then just be careful when going over decals um, it could take those off as well if you go too hard on those but yeah I think it really helps freshen up the frame um, yeah this frame came with uh, nutted brakes but it had recessed grooves so I was wondering if I could uh, put recessed brakes on there um, you can see this is a bolt, it fit into the front fork, but for some odd reason it wouldn't fit into the rear one. So uh, what I had to do was sand the inside a little bit to, uh, to make it fit. Alright, so now that uh, my frame 
was ready for recess brakes, I needed to put recess bolts on my brakes. Um, so I actually had another set of uh, the same brakes that were recessed. What I did was I ended up switching the bolts across. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, yeah, it's actually not too difficult. You just got to take off the lock the lock nut on there. I ended up screwing off the other, the other lever as well, just to make it a little bit easier. The tip here is there's actually a little tiny bolt that holds the, the bolt in. So don't forget to take that out before you unscrew it. I didn't know how to do this. I, when I did it, I had to work it out myself. So it kind of damaged the bolt just a teeny bit, but it wasn't, it was it didn't stop me from using it. It was still all right. Um, and then here you can just see me uh, just switching them out, making sure I have the parts in the right, in the right order, making sure I don't, I don't lose anything, um, anything that can, you can keep in there, keep in there, it'll make your job easier. Um, there's little washers inside and I just basically, yeah, just took out the bolt and switched it in. Um, and yeah, that, that was it. Um, putting them back together, there's one thing you got to watch out for, um, is to make sure that when you're screwing them down, there's a little adjuster bolt on the, on the arm, I guess you would call it. Um, you just got to make sure it sits underneath that, under the arm before you, you screw it in so you don't end up screwing straight into that bolt and pushing and just ruining that bolt. Um, but yeah, that's basically just the two things that you need to watch out for and I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so basically that's how you do it. Um, once I did it with this one, I did it with the other one, same process. Um, yeah, just watch out for the, those two, two things and I think you'll be good. Uh, yeah, I had a little leftover adapter here that was for the front brake, if you remember, but you don't need that anymore. All right, removing the pedals. Um, yeah, you think removing the pedals is usually a pretty easy thing, but it was one of the, one of the biggest problems I had with this bike. <laughs> Um, so what I did first, I basically soaked it with, with a WD-40, yeah, it was just like super tight, and then I tried hot water, boiling water, I read on the internet, that works well, I used a container, which, make sure your container doesn't melt, um, and I just pour it over. What happened here was it worked for, it worked for the right, uh, right crank arm, but it didn't work on the left, so I guess it does work to a certain extent. Um, you can see here, yeah, the right one, the right one came off. I was stoked about that. It took a lot of effort, but it came off. And then here, you can see me struggling with the with the with the left arm here. Um, yeah, using using these tools, which weren't. I don't think they were very good. I ended up round, rounding some of my tools um, just because I was. Um, I don't know. The metal was too soft, and then it would just round out. But yeah. I ended up soaking it with a little bit more WD-40, trying the hot water again, tried it a few times, but yeah, it was, it was really a struggle. Um, I never had this much trouble with pedals before, so yeah, I just had to go look on the internet to see what else I could do. So here, try heating it up, um, both with the, the stove and the, the hairdryer, that didn't work, and then I read somewhere where you can soak it in ice and yeah once I soaked it in ice I just had a, a proper wrench this time and um, it came off pretty easy like way easier than expected um, so yeah if you have any troubles in the future of taking a pedal um, try try the ice um, I recommend it it worked for me Uh, here, yeah, just taking all the parts off, getting them ready to clean. Um, taking the levers off and all the extra bits. Um, the handlebar tape was super, super sticky for some reason, uh, but I guess that's what happens when a bike's been sitting around for really long. Um, but yeah. All right, cleaning the parts. Uh, so yeah, basically same process as usual. You can use a nylon brush or a wire brush. If you use a wire brush, just be careful that it doesn't scratch your parts. I use a brass one and then you can use an old 
Uh, yeah, using an old sponge, just make sure it doesn't scratch scratch your parts again or the paint. Um, yeah, just dish detergent. Use degreaser as well, hot water. Um, for really tough parts like the handlebar tape, I used WD-40 and that worked for me. Uh, yeah, just clean the saddle here. Um, taking part, of course. And tip here is putting WD-40 on the rails to clean the rust off the rails. I use a brass brush and that gets rid of it really well, um, almost like a new. And then to clean uh, the actual saddle itself, uh, I think I used uh, hand soap and hand soap and water and then just uh, use paper towel just to wipe it off and freshen it up. Um, I'm sure you can use some type of leather cleaner as well, but I didn't. I didn't have that. Um, and then I, I, I finished it off with um, moisturizing cream, um, and that hopefully helps um, give it a little bit of life again. Um, also used a little bit of toothpaste for the stubborn stains, um, but yeah, cleaned up pretty well. I think um, it's not going to be perfect, but a lot cleaner than it was um, and then I had a little tear on the back and I just put super glue on that just to make sure it doesn't rip apart and that's it all right clean the hoods um, tip here I like to use WD-40 uh, works really well for me I've tried a few other cleaners I think the greaser works well um, but uh, WD-40 works the best for me you can see yeah once you wipe it, it just comes straight off you just wipe it off and then yeah just to make it a little bit less sticky i use a moisturizing cream again on the on the hoods and yeah they turned out turned out really well yeah once again not perfect but way better than before um here you can see the difference between the the one i clean and the one that wasn't clean um yeah huge difference so yeah what i did was basically clean another one as well that's it All right, I had this uh, one of the the levers. Um, the little plastic bit around it was cracked, so I ended up putting a little bit of tape around this. You know, using um, it's just electrical tape, white white electrical tape. Using a little pin to push it down in the grooves, um, and then this will save it from falling off. Because once it falls off, yeah, it's really hard to replace. So um, yeah, just keeping that on there. Um, some people might cringe at this, but yeah, that was my soul for this one. All right, clean the wheels and the cassette here. Yeah, just use the greaser, sprayed it on, use a, a rag and you just put it in between the cogs there. Um, and it, yeah, you know, cleaned up pretty well. Um, and then just with the rims, um, same deal here, use a little brass brush making sure it doesn't scratch your rims um, but it clean cleaned it cleaned it up yeah and here's everything cleaned up all the parts um, yeah they all cleaned up pretty well I think and same with the wheels and then the frame so yeah we're already uh, all ready to build all right putting the bike together um, yeah, pretty straightforward here. I left the bottom bracket and the head headset. Uh, they both spun pretty well. So yeah, I left it as is for this one. Um, um, put all the parts on, making sure um, they're on correctly. Everything's kind of lined up. Yeah, pretty straightforward here. Just putting on the gear cables um, and putting on the chain. Yeah, just putting on the brake levers here, just making sure it's lined up um, and straight. Uh, installing the housing, um, just make sure you measure a few times before you cut it. Um, always cut a little bit longer, you can always trim it down. Uh, make sure that when you cut it, the, the holes are clear. So I usually push a screwdriver in there a little bit to clear it up. You can see on the right side is good, and on the left side, um, you need to fix it. Um, and this is my method for putting uh, internal routing. So you basically push the push the cable in first and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the cable as a guide grab the cable, grab the housing and then put that on 
Um, and usually I put some WD-40 inside the housing um, just to make it uh, work a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, here you can see pushing it in and then when it gets to the end, you'll see it come through the end, you pull it pull it down and out and then it should, be, should work well. So here you can just see me putting the brake cable in and then just to tie it on the bar, I just use one piece of tape. A lot of people use like three or four pieces. One, one piece of tape works fine. And then just for the tension, or the length of the housing cable. This is something you're gonna to have to play around with, but what I like to do is just making sure it's not too tight or too lax. So you can see when I turn the bar, there's still a tiny little bit of gap. It's just resting on the head tube. It's not too tight. It's not gonna to rub too hard. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my little tip. It seems to work well for me. Uh, here's a little diagram of what I think's right, uh, not too tight and not too loose. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and the same thing with the with the front brake. Um, once again, try to you gotta play around with the length here. Make sure you get the right length. Um, what I like to do is have it cross the other cable and have it in the center of that head tube. And then here, yeah, same with the rear derailleur cable. You can see I, I size it a few times here. If it's too long. I just keep trim, trimming it until it's long enough where it's gonna give it give it good movement and not too tight, so that it kind of stops it where there's, there's too much resistance. Yeah, and then when putting on the, the gear cables, make sure, actually gear and brake cables, make sure you stretch them out a bit. I just kind of pull down on them a little bit and then it's going to make your gears run a little bit better and you not have to readjust them after the first ride. Um, yeah, and then just here, just setting up the gears. Um, there's the um, Park Tools video on how to index the gears. YouTube that, yeah. All right, putting the last few pieces on, just cap on the crank arm. Cutting off the, all the excess cables. All right, touch up painting. Uh, put a little bit of rust convert on here, just be careful with the stuff, it's pretty toxic. Uh, make sure you wipe it off clean. Um, and then here you can see um, I'm mixing up some paint. Um, I just use, uh, I think it's house paint, it's latex paint. So basically you just got to do this by eye. Um, with, with house paints it usually dries a, a shade darker than what you mix it. So here you can see I'm trying to mix it, put it on, is it, is it the right color? Um, it's too light so I add a little bit more paint on it. Uh, and this was close enough, um, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, and then you can see that I use um, kind of just like a wet towel to um, wipe off all the excess. Um, just wipe it lightly and it should fall into the scratches and it, it should uh, it should work out pretty well if you uh, if you just take your time. Um, yeah, there, there it is. I'm pretty happy with it, how that worked. Installing bar tape. So first, I cut a little bit of section for where where the lever joins onto the bar. You're going to cover up that little band. This tape had a little bit of adhesive on it already. Um, I spent a lot of time cleaning up the bar, so I put the adhesive um, on a blanket so it wouldn't be as sticky. Um, and then yeah, you just basically tape it around. Make sure it's even when you overlap it. I usually overlap maybe like half or a third and then you just kind of pull it tight and then keep the same process as you get there to the, the lever here I usually pull it down up and over up and around um, yeah you can just follow what you see in the video if you want to do it this bar tape was actually super super hard to put on um, it was cotton bar tape where there was no um, there was no stretch to it but yeah kind of just take your time make sure it's aligned um, another tip for getting the right the right length at the end is you just got to rewrap it a couple of times until you have the right length. If there's too much material, you can kind of cut it on an angle and then just um, wrap it up, put the point in, and then push the, the bar end on. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's my, that's my method that I use. Um, yeah, you can see how it looks here. You know, just try to be as even as possible. Um, but yeah, that's it. And then wrapping the other one, same process. Cut the little bar tape, tape it on, put it under. Um, yeah. 
it makes the hoods look less white, of course, but you know, that's what you're going to get from an old bike. Um, here, final thing, putting on the pedals. Um, once again, I thought this was going to be really easy, but uh, yeah, one of the crank arms was super tight, so just take, yeah, take your time. Uh, yeah, just put a ton of grease on. Um, I had such a hard time taking it off that I didn't want that to happen again, so yeah, just, just make sure that was good. And yeah, that's it. Here's the finished bike. super fun to build a few hiccups here and there but managed to get through it the rides super smooth feels super light handles really well uh yeah thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video